In many countries, governments face numerous challenges to enacting and enforcing environmental regulation. These constraints have far-reaching consequences. Weak environmental regulation in one country affects global patterns of climate change and pollution. As such, when domestic policies fail, other countries may wish to intervene via their trade policy. Import tariffs are taxes imposed by one country on goods imported from another, and they provide a means of targeting the prices received by polluters in world markets. Can they serve as an effective substitute for domestic regulation? This paper studies that question in a key industry for climate change, palm oil. Palm oil is among the most widely used plant products in the world, and is one of the largest sources of carbon emissions. From 1990 to 2016, it accounted for 5% of global emissions, an amount exceeding that of the entire Indian economy. Within this market, the author focuses on Indonesia and Malaysia, which together account for 84% of global supply. Both countries contain peatland forests that release large amounts of carbon when cleared for palm oil plantations. Indeed, emissions from peat deposits exceed those from tree biomass by 5 to 10 times. Yet, there are significant barriers to domestic regulation. Palm oil is a major source of export revenue and has lifted millions out of poverty. This limits the incentive to regulate and has spurred an active discussion around trade policy interventions, particularly among European policymakers. To gauge the effectiveness of such policies, the author estimates a model of consumer demand and firm supply in the market for palm oil. On this side, annual data on worldwide consumption patterns are used to estimate demand curves. These measure the extent to which consumer demand responds to changes in price. For example, if a country imposes an import tariff on palm oil, thereby increasing the price faced by its consumers, the model estimates the corresponding fall in demand. On the supply side, firms invest in palm oil production by building mills and deforesting land to develop plantations. These decisions are modeled using data on actual patterns of development over the last several decades, as well as detailed geospatial data on characteristics such as yields. The supply model estimates the spatial pattern of palm oil development and its sensitivity to world prices. In combination with the demand side, it allows us to answer the following question. If import tariffs reduce demand, and therefore depress world prices and firm revenues, how much does development slow, and where do those changes occur? These patterns are linked to the spatial distribution of carbon stocks to evaluate the environmental impact of different policies. In particular, consider four hypotheticals. A palm oil consumption tax levied by Indonesia and Malaysia that taxes all exports and domestic consumption, an import tariff levied by all importers, one levied by just the EU, China, and India, and one levied by just the EU. This plot shows the estimated effects of each policy. The model predicts that domestic regulation would reduce emissions by 40% and increase social welfare by $115 billion. Strikingly, tariffs are nearly as effective. A coalition uniting all importers would achieve similar emissions reductions and increase social welfare by $108 billion. But, the effectiveness of trade policy is subject to two factors. First, coordination. As the size of the tariff coalition shrinks, so does its effectiveness. 
lower coverage limits the impact of tariffs on world prices, and therefore, their impact on firm revenues, palm oil development, and emissions. The problem is that coordination is difficult to achieve. Countries that defect get to free ride on the emissions reductions and lower prices induced by the coalition. Transfers are a potential solution. Countries that place a high value on emissions reductions may be able to incentivize coordination via transfers to countries that value them less. Beyond coordination, a second factor is commitment. Tariffs improve social welfare over a long horizon, but in any given period, they impose a cost without any benefit. Tariffs cannot reverse past emissions, and they have no immediate impact on future development. This makes it difficult to commit to upholding tariffs in perpetuity. But with only limited commitment, tariffs become less effective at dissuading palm oil production and reducing emissions. Ultimately, commitment is an issue of institutions. Bodies such as the EU have strong institutions that give them commitment power. This makes meaningful unilateral action possible. A fully committed EU acting alone can reduce emissions by up to 6%, a level comparable to that of less committed action by larger coalitions. And so, this paper provides a framework for evaluating international climate action. When domestic regulation fails, trade policy provides a tool for other countries to intervene but the effectiveness of such actions depends on the level of coordination and commitment. Notably, the author also shows that while full-blown domestic regulation may not be feasible, partial regulation can be highly effective. In the context of palm oil, imposing an export tax alone would reduce emissions by up to 39%. Such a policy generates substantial government revenue for Indonesia and Malaysia at the expense of foreign consumers, and should therefore be appealing even absent environmental concerns. To read more on this topic, you can check out the paper's references to other related work. This includes research on trade and the environment, coordination and commitment in environmental regulation, and the use of trade policy in low-regulation settings more broadly.